Hi everyone, welcome to Interview Pro. We had a great start with GitHub Actions. We created a simple workflow that is triggered on pushing the code to the specified branch. There are several events that can trigger a workflow. We have already seen push event. We'll see many more in our upcoming videos. In this video, I want to show an option to run the workflow manually. Let's get started. We know that to specify an event, we use the property on. If it's a push event, we would use push. For manual triggering, we have an event called workflow underscore dispatch. By specifying workflow underscore dispatch in the event section of the workflow, we see an option to run the workflow manually. This is the example that we used in our previous section. I'll create another YML file and use the same code to demonstrate manual trigger. Under GitHub slash workflows, I'll create a new file uh, manual.yml. Let me duplicate the tab so that I can create uh, copy the same code here. We'll go to demo.yml. I'll copy the code from here and paste it in our manual workflow. I'll name this workflow as manual workflow so that we see this name under actions tab. Now we don't want to use push event. I'll update this with workflow underscore dispatch. Just put a workflow underscore dispatch followed by a colon and leave it as is. Let's save this. Commit your changes. Go to actions tab. So this is the workflow run that was triggered by hello world. If you click on hello world, we see create manual dot YML because hello world is meant to run or trigger a workflow whenever code is pushed into this workflow. So if you uh, open this create manual dot YML, we see there is an event on push. Now, if we go back to our uh, manual workflow, if we click on manual workflow, we don't see any workflows for this, uh, uh, any runs for this workflow yet, but we do see an option run workflow. This was because we added a trigger called workflow underscore dispatch. Only when workflow underscore dispatch event is present, then we'll see this button. So if you expand this uh, little button here, you'll see an option to select the branch. We have only one branch here and we don't have any tags. If there are multiple branches, you will see a list of branches here and the tags. You can also search your branch using this uh, input. Now, uh, because we have only one branch, I'll stay at the main branch and click on run workflow. A manual workflow has run. It took just 11 seconds. Just click on it. We see demo. And if you open the demo, we see these steps. We haven't changed the name of the job. So we still see demo here. Uh, it's run echo hello world and we are printing hello world. If you go to summary, look at this. The event here is workflow underscore dispatch because we used a manual trigger to trigger this workflow. Not just a drop down to select the branch. We can provide other inputs to the workflow when it is triggered manually. To specify inputs, we use the property inputs under the workflow dispatch event. There are five types of inputs that can be passed to a workflow. Number, choice, boolean, string, and environment. We'll see this environment input type in our upcoming videos. In this video, let's focus on the other four. Event inputs have four properties. Description. It provides a prompt for the user about what the input is for. What you provide here is displayed in the portal. Without a description, user may not understand the purpose of the input. Thus, this property is a required property. 
then comes type it specifies the data type expected for the input for example string boolean number and others which we have seen in the previous slide specifying the type ensures that the input is correctly interpreted and followed by the workflow so the type is also a required property then we have required property it indicates whether the input is mandatory or optional if required is set to true the user must provide a value for the input when triggering the workflow if omitted or set to false the input becomes optional the fourth property is default it provides a default value for the input if the user does not provide a value when triggering the workflow the default value is used instead the property is particularly useful for optional inputs or for providing a commonly used value as a default description and type are mandatory properties for each input in a github workflow that uses workflow underscore dispatch required and default are optional properties they can be used to customize the behavior of the input for example a string input would look like this under inputs we have name name is the name of the input description i have given it as name this is what we want to see on the ui this input is of type string let's add inputs to our workflows and see how they work let's update this i'll update the job name as manual under workflow dispatch let's add inputs i'll add a simple input first i'll just say name the description is name with the uppercase n and this is of type string let's give a default value a test maybe i won't give required now to see how it looks so i'll commit the changes i'll just say string input type and commit changes to the main branch if we go to actions uh, this will trigger but our focus is on manual workflow so i'll click on manual workflow in the left panel now we have a button to run the workflow previously we saw only the option to select the branch but now we have an input called name this is what i gave in the description field and this is our default value even if i don't provide any value it would take this test value so i won't modify this default value let's click on run workflow this will trigger a new workflow if you open it we see the job name updated we see the job steps working fine let's go back to manual.yml we gave an input here but how do we access this value let me edit this file instead of hello world i want to print the name that i have given in this input to do that we have something called inputs dot give the name so this is the syntax to access the inputs we uh, use dollar followed by double curly braces and then use inputs context which has all the input names listed under this inputs so our input name is name so in inputs dot name will give us the value that was typed by the user or the default value if no value is given by the user in the name property name field so let me commit this access input value and commit the changes let's go to actions manual workflow now click on run workflow i'll click on run workflow again this will start a new workflow we can see the workflow numbers here it was 1 2 and the new workflow is given the number 3 open it and go to greetings 
previously it was echo hello test now inputs.name was processed and we see the value that is entered in the name input now instead of using default value i'll type something i'll say interview pro and click on run workflow we see a new workflow running and open this job inside greetings we see interview pro so this is how a default value works whenever a default value is present and if the user doesn't change or provide the input it will take the default value if the user explicitly provides a value the value provided by the user will be processed let's update our workflow to see how other input types look like okay let me edit this file another input here we had name now i'll say age description age with an uppercase a the type is number then we have i don't want to give any default here but i'll make this required required true if you don't use required it will be false by default let's try to access the age input in this uh, let me create another uh, step i'll update the name to age and instead of name this is going to be inputs dot age uh, there is an error saying invalid type found string was expected but in integer was found uh, you can just ignore this error so commit the changes number input type click on commit go to actions manual workflow now click on run workflow age i'll provide 24 maybe and click on run workflow go to this workflow manual we see there is another step here called age this prints 24 now what happens if i don't provide this age value now i'll simply click on run workflow without providing any value for age uh, before clicking on run workflow itself if you hover on the input you see there is a prompt saying please fill out this field i'll click on run workflow without filling that i still see the same prompt here so until and unless you provide the required fields you cannot run the workflow now let's go back to workflow again i'll edit this workflow and add uh, two other input types now I'll use choice. So there is a input called gender. Description is gender. Then we have type. This is of type choice. When you have a type choice, you need to provide options as well. You can provide an array or there is a format like this. You can provide hyphen and give your options here male and female let's access this in our workflow i'll add another step called gender you can access all of them in single step but just to make it clear i'm using multiple steps also this is a good example to show that you can use multiple steps in a workflow the name of the input that i want to access is inputs.gender let's commit the changes choice input type uh, actually let me add the other input type as well we have seen string number and choice the fourth type of input is a boolean so let's add another input called married description is married with a question mark then we have type this is going to be boolean then that's it for boolean we don't need to provide any options or i don't want to make it as a required field and also i don't want to make it a default because boolean is false by default 
Let's access the values. Let me add another step. This is going to be married. Now commit the changes. All input types. Click on commit. Go to actions. Manual workflow. Let's run this workflow. We have two more added here. This is an age required field. This is gender. This is of type choice. That means it provides us a drop down with all the options that we specified in the code. I have given two options male and female. Uh, let me select female. This is of type boolean. Remember that the name of the input was married. The description is is married. So we always see the value provided in the description here and boolean will get a checkbox. If you don't check it, then it's false. If you check it, it's going to be true. I'll provide the age before I click on run workflow. If you open the workflow, we see all these steps. So age, it's 23. Gender is female. Married is true because I checked it. Let me uncheck and see what it gives. I'll provide 23 and I won't check this and gender I'm uh, putting it to male. So run workflow. Now if we look at the steps. Gender is going to be male. Married is going to be false. So these are the four types of inputs that you can uh, use when you want to trigger a workflow manually using workflow underscore dispatch event. We will learn about the other input type environment when we discuss about environments in a workflow. One point to remember is that workflow underscore dispatch trigger that is this drop down here is available only on the default branch. In settings tab, we have an option called default branch. Currently, the, op the branch that is set as default branch is main. That's why we see uh, run workflow options in the main branch. You can update the default branch to other branches uh, because we have only one branch called main. We don't see an option to update this. If you have multiple branches, you'll see an option to update the branch. Uh, let me quickly create another branch. So go to branches, click on new branch. I'll name this as a test branch. Uh, this will be created on top of main. Click on create new branch. We have a new branch here. Now if you go to settings, we see an option to switch to another branch. Using this, I can update our main branch test underscore branch as default. Now if you go to actions, go to main workflow or manual workflow and click on run workflow, the default branch is set to test underscore branch. But uh, this option won't be available in your main branch. So make sure your default branch is set properly when you are using workflow underscore dispatch. So this is all about running a workflow manually using workflow underscore dispatch event along with the input types. I hope the concept is clear. If you like the content, please like, share and subscribe to Interview Pro. Thank you.